next frame, we can use the graphical results window to view our member force diagrams. And there are a lot of different diagrams available for us. We can look at things like axial force, shear force, moment, torsion, stress, all in our members. So those members could represent beams, columns, braces, cables, basically any one-dimensional element. And then we also have the ability to look at envelopes. So we can look at force or moment envelopes, for example, that uh, might be able to give us a more comprehensive understanding of how the model's responding to multiple loading scenarios. And we're gonna continue using the model that we were looking at in the previous exercises. Uh, I've already ran the analysis. I'm in the graphical results window and I have the results right now. I'm looking at the low combination results by clicking on this plus sign and selecting my low case. I can do that. And we can actually get an understanding for where our loads are being applied. Uh, if we click on the toggles in the bottom of the status bar here, I have this display joint loads toggle here that's currently turned off. But I can turn it on and I can see here that these 100 kilonewton joint loads that were applied in my dead load have actually been factored up, or sorry, my live load load case have been factored up 50%. Uh, so now that they have a magnitude of 150 kilonewtons in my load combination. And I also have some member loads and self-weight applied. So the self-weight is being applied globally all over. Every single element has self-weight. And then I also have my member load and they're superimposed on top of each other one right now. Now I'm going to start by looking at some of our results. I'm going to look at the Shear Diagrams tool here on the left-hand side. If I left-click on this, I get a little legend that appears. And if this legend doesn't appear on your screen when you click on this, just make sure you have the rainbow button toggled on to display your legend. And within this, the data bar is giving me different ways of looking at these results. So here I can look at the Shear in the Y direction, the local Y direction, and the Shear in the local Z direction. And we can see what the local Z Shear looks like due to the fact that I have that gradually transitioning load uh, applied to this beam. Now we also have the ability to change the number of stations that are used to represent the curve shape of our moment or shear diagrams. So this station by default set, the station setting by default is set to five. And I can increase this if I wanna get a more detailed representation of this curve. So now it's gonna have 100 stations along the length of the curve that are representing the various points at that location. Now for a small model like ours, this won't actually have any effect on the behavior of the model. It's not gonna slow down or anything like that. But as the models get larger, uh, it can take more time to generate a lot of different member diagrams, each with 100 stations. So that's why we use the default of five. Now this shear diagram and the legend that's associated with this will certainly give us an understanding for how the shear varies along the various members in our model. But if we want a more detailed representation, we can also click on these toggles at the top of the screen in the data bar. So right now I can look at the display of the maximum shear force, and it's gonna show me the maximum shear force in every selected member. I can look at the absolute maximum as well, in case the value that is greatest is in negative, this might be more useful. And I can rotate the text if I wanted to align with my member. It might actually be easier to look at this member I'm looking at the front view, then I can see everything head on. Another option is if we want to look at a specific member in more detail, we can always just right click on the member and then go to properties. And this will open up a dialog. And within this dialog here, we can see that specific member diagram. And associated with that, we also have all the different station results available not only for shear, but also for moment. And it's gonna show us exactly where that station is located. So again, that's where the 100 stations comes into play. This could be less if I wanted it to. And we can switch load cases and combinations and even result diagrams here. Now I could switch to, for example, the moment diagram. I'm looking at the Y moment diagram and I can see where the positive and negative moment transition points are and get a better appreciation for how the moment varies. Now we're not limited to viewing the results for a single low case or combination at a time. 
We can view the load cases by clicking on this P button at the top of the screen. And here I can see all my different load case results. And I actually have this load list option here in the data bar. And within the load list option, I can choose to view a range of load cases, or I could view all of them all at the same time. Now, if I view all of them all at the same time, it's going to superimpose the numbers for the absolute max on top of one another, so that might not be very useful. But we can also use the Envelopes button. One thing I would just recommend for anyone using the Envelopes button for the first time, make sure you select the Load List option first, because if I just look, click on the Envelope button while I'm only viewing the results for one load case, I'll get the following message. If I click on View Envelopes, I didn't get this message here, and it's just telling me that I'm only looking at one low case, so it can't generate an envelope with just a single low case. But I should select more than one low case in order to view this. And that makes sense once you read it. So all I would have to do is just click the low case uh, load list all, or enter a range of low cases here. I'm just going to select all. And you can see here, this is going to show me my envelope. And it could be that one of my low cases is dominating the response. In this situation here, it looks like low case number three is governing, and the other two uh, don't really seem to be showing up in this envelope. So why don't we create another low case just to see this envelope feature a little bit more clearly. To do that, I'm going to switch back to the loads window. And I'm going to create a new low case. And this low case that I'm going to create, I'm just going to call it uplift. And within this uplift load case, I'm going to use the global member load tool this one right here, and I'm going to apply a load in the global Z direction. Uh, it's not going to be partially varying, it's going to be fully uniform, and it's going to have a magnitude of 5 kilonewtons per meter. This is a positive value, not a negative, so it's going to be going up, and it's going to be applied to the horizontal beam, and then I'm going to rerun the analysis. I'm going to run an analysis, again, using a linear static analysis this time. We get a clean solution, and I'll proceed to the next step here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my moment diagrams again. Once again, because I only have the single low case selected right now, but I have the envelope option toggled, it's giving me this option, or sorry, that message. And I'm just going to make sure that I have the all low cases option selected here. And now I'm going to look at my moments. In this case here, I'll look at the moments about the y-axis. And this might be a little bit more interesting to look at now. I'm going to just increase the number of stations to be consistent with last time. And now we can clearly see what the envelopes are looking like. We have both positive and negative moments occurring at the same locations because we're looking at this moment diagram. Now we can also view our envelope information by right-clicking on this member and going to Properties, just like we did before. And we can see the envelope results for this particular member in more detail. So notice here we're looking at the MY results right now for this diagram. And we have a column for MY max. And if we scroll over, we also have a column for MY min. So we can see what the maximum and minimum moments are at any location along our beam for the low cases of interest or low combinations. We can also view this information numerically rather than graphically using the numerical interface. By clicking on the numerical results window, we have this option to view the member forces spreadsheet. Now, I probably don't want 100 stations for this example here. I'm just going to bring it back down to five just to make it a little bit easier to view the whole result for all four members. And within the member forces spreadsheet, we can see the various stations along the length of our members, the axial force, shear, torsion, and moments at different locations. Now, right now, I'm only viewing the results for uplift. But I could, once again, go to look at the all low cases. So I'd enter 1 through 4 here, then press the plus sign or the check sign, and then I can click on the envelopes button. And now this is going to show me the moment envelope 
in this particular case, it's highlighting the y moment uh, that I will get out of these four low cases. So it's the same information we saw graphically, but this time presented numerically. Now, if we're interested in finding the maximum force or moment in our structure, the numerical results window is also a great tool for doing that as well. Right next to this envelopes tool, we have the find max min forces tool. And within this here, I'm able to go through and search for extreme values within the spreadsheet. So in this situation, why don't we try finding the maximum Z moment? I'm just going to say find the absolute maximum or just the maximum Z moment. This is Z moment right here and press OK. And it will highlight that cell. And in this situation, that Z moment is in member number one at location uh, station five meters. So it's at the very top of one of my columns. And if I wanted to find out where this was on my model, I would just go back to the graphical results window and turn off this moment envelope button here, just since I won't really need it right now. But I'm actually going to look at the Z moment results. And first of all, we can see here for, uh, we were looking at our low cases, we can see what our moments were in this particular low cases. So I have all the different low cases I could go through. But what I'm really interested in here is looking at which member was which. And I can toggle that information on by going to the member IDs button here at the bottom of the status bar. And I can see member number one is this left-hand side column. Chances are we'd have a similar value on the right-hand side, but remember we don't have quite a symmetric load. 